An average smartphone user has 80 apps on their phone, but only uses 30 in a month. This means that more than 62% of apps don't get used. Apps have truly revolutionized the way we connect with the virtual world and have been the flag bearers of the internet revolution. They took off with the launch of iPhone in 2007 and were designed to complete specific tasks. There was an app for almost everything, but as smartphones became mainstream and more people went online, developers started to launch multiple apps for the same tasks, leading to some real tough competition. With over 3.2 billion smartphone users across the world, today we have about 2 million apps on the Apple Play Store and about 3 million on Google Play Store. And this competition is only set to grow as millions of people join the smartphone world every year and spend 88% of their time on apps. Usage and engagement are the two main things that an app company cares about. And an app on the home screen is typically used two times more than an app that you have to manually find. With only 24 spots on your home screen for one app, the competition for home screen placement is fierce. Due to this competition, companies are increasingly thinking about how they can get on your home screen and stay there. The best way to do this is to offer as many services as a company can through one app. And that is what a super app is. So this week on Another Thing You Know, we deep dive into why there is a race to become the next super app. And the reason this is much more evident in China and Southeast Asia as compared to Europe and the West. While apps were originally designed to do one task efficiently, super apps are apps that can provide multiple services through one app and one account. It offers consumers a full ecosystem of services shaped around their needs. The most successful such apps in the world come from China, considered as the birthplace of super apps. The two most common that you might have heard of are Tencent's WeChat and Alibaba Group's Alipay. WeChat launched in 2011 has over 1.1 billion users in China and is estimated to offer more than 1 million services through mini programs. WeChat has messaging service, payment methods, booking service, cab hailing, video calling and a ton of other services accessible through just this one app. Consider it as a combination of WhatsApp, Facebook, Uber, Expedia, Zometo and many others all wrapped into one simple app. WeChat and Alipay both have become giants with multi-billion dollar revenues and their approach has infected businesses across Asia. They have paved a way for other companies to follow the same model. Notable examples are Singapore's Grab, India's Paytm, South Korea's Kakao and Indonesia's GoTo. The model of these apps is simple. These apps usually start as any other app providing one service. India's Paytm, for example, started off as a mobile recharge app in 2013. But as it gained more users, the app started to diversify into various other payment services like travel and movies. Today, it is India's only mobile first bank that is common to prove. The services that these super apps provide might not necessarily be linked to each other. But the idea is to have all day-to-day -day utilities built in the app to encourage more use, bundled with many other things to encourage users to come back and stay within their ecosystem. The countries mentioned earlier have a young population who are digitally savvy and in some cases have leaped directly into a mobile first internet. This coupled with more online user growth have really catapulted these super apps into a league of their own. These apps tend to dominate one category of service, rake in millions of users and keep growing by offering new services to these users. Now, if you look closely, all the super apps mentioned are either from China or Southeast Asia. Despite their massive success, we do not see similar apps in the developed economies of Europe or even Americas. There are multiple reasons for this, but let's look into the two main ones. First is regulation. There hasn't been any strict laws or frameworks in China to govern privacy and data policies which has allowed these tech companies to build entire ecosystems without any friction from the government. On the other hand, Europe has very strong privacy policies and GDPR regulations that mandate fair use data sharing between companies and even within different services of the same company. Super apps keep building stacks of services based on the data they have for millions of its users. 
a model that is much less likely to scale in a strictly regulated environment like Europe and US. The other big reason why we have not seen these super apps scale is competition. Major tech giants like Google, Facebook, WhatsApp, Twitter are all banned in China. So the homegrown alternatives of WeChat and Alipay do not really have any competition. On the other hand, there is fierce competition in the West amongst services. Netflix, YouTube, Facebook are all competing for the online video space. And you have WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, Signal, iMessage all competing for the ultimate chat service spot. This stark difference in the level of competition has also not seen super apps of the East compete with the apps of the West. So what does this all mean? Does this really mean that we will never see the rise of super apps globally? This space is definitely getting more interesting as data protection laws evolve. We are already seeing the likes of PayPal and Revolut aiming to be the financial super app. Bolt, a fresh new unicorn from Europe, aims to be the super app of transportation. But will there be one app that does it all? That is something we need to wait and watch for. Thank you for watching and remember to click the like button if you enjoyed the video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.